Welcome. Thank you for coming and for watching today's webinar. At Dames, we are committed to helping parents who are raising special needs children. Our webinar series is one way that we help parents make empowered decisions for their children. Please enjoy this webinar, and if you like it, please consider becoming a member. We have over 15 webinars on our website available to you right now much cheaper than a conference, plus you get all of the other bonuses of being a DAMES member, including guided meditations and over 100 yoga, Pilates, and fitness classes. Enjoy this webinar, and I hope to see you on the next one. Hello, DAMES members. Thank you so much for everybody for coming to this webinar. This is our second webinar in July. And the reason why we had two is because right now our community is really struggling in the face of COVID-19, in the face of school closures, in the face of like, oh my God, how do we teach our children at home? I have no idea. Like I was a teacher for a little while as an adjunct professor, professor for like college students. I have no idea how to teach children, especially my children, especially children who have learning difficulties. So today I am so pleased that we have Kathy and Lauren who are from Silver Lining Education who are going to come and give a webinar on how we can make school learning fun and exciting at home. Um, Kathy Dennis, I hope I got that right. Uh, Genu Denuous? It's genius. <laughs> okay, there you go. Um, is, um, uh, has a master's of education and a master's of special education and so does Lauren Weber and together they have partnered up to create Silver Lining Education and they started it in 2019 and I swear every single convention that I go to I'm sitting across from these beautiful women and they have the most amazing booth and they have like all of this fun and engaging stuff and kids are just all over them, like the entire time playing and learning. And I could think of nobody better to have with us today to give us this presentation. Ladies, thank you for being here. Thank thank you. That's very sweet, thank you. Thank you very much for having <laughs> us. Yeah, it was such a pleasure meeting you a year ago at the conference and we're really excited to be here today. Awesome, all right, I'm gonna let you carry it away. I see that whole table behind you. I know you have a lot to get to, so it's all yours. Great. Well, welcome. We're really excited to show you what we do. Lauren and I are one-on-one -on -one private instructors. And so in a setting um, like very similar to a classroom that you would find in a school, we do private instruction. Um, our, most of the students that we work with have autism, ADHD, and they also have learning challenges. So we're gonna show you uh, just some activities that we do with math, with reading, and with writing. Um, so I'll go ahead and get started. Yeah. Um, the way Lauren and I have uh, broken things up today is we want, we want you to be able to just find items at your home that you have in drawers or you have in your mm -hmm. junk drawer or in a closet pull those out and use them in a way that's not typical. Um, so we're gonna start with dice. If you have any board games at home, you can have a lot of fun with dice. So, start off with this wonderful game. This game is called Tensies. Um, and you take 10 dice, and you give it to the person you're playing with, and then you each have 10 dice. And you roll the dice, and you find matching dice. For instance, I have one, two, three, four, sixes. So I'm gonna take the sixes, and I'm gonna set those aside. And Lauren's gonna go with fives. There's a couple of things you can do. There's a teaching moment right here. The goal of the game is to get all sixes or all, all fives, and then you scream tensies. But right here is a teaching moment. So you can take six times four and do a, a multiplication problem. Mm -hmm. You can do a division problem. You can do a subtraction problem. Mm -hmm. You can do any operation mm -hmm. you'd like. Even my count with count by fives. 
skip counting mm -hmm. as well. So then let's keep on rolling. I didn't get any sixes, so we just Me roll neither. again. And it goes really, really, really fast. Roll again. And kids oh. love this game, love this game. Again, every stopping point, there's a teaching moment about an operation in math. Once you get all sixes or all fives, you yell tensies, and then you do a multiplication problem, mm -hmm. five times 10 equals 50. You could also even do my number times your number, five times six, five plus six, six take away five. Um, Any combination. Mm -hmm. Just always try to be thinking outside the box of what the game is intended for. All right, so that's our first example. Ooh, we'll put that off to the side. Another great tool that mostly everyone has is good old measuring tape. So this is really great. Um, as a number line, I know I have many of a time wrote a number line just one through 10, and it's and I, and I lose the piece of paper, and I was like, where did I put it? So this is so great because it goes all the way through 60. And then on the other side, it's already by tens. It's already grouped in tens. So something like this, you can teach um, by fives, by twos. You could put a marker. So for example, here's a marker. Um, let's put it on the camera. Let's say we're doing two mm -hmm. plus five. We're going to put the marker on two. Yeah. And then we're going to add five. One, two, three, four, five. And the answer is seven. Yep. You could also put different markers for even numbers and odd numbers. Um, counting by threes, again, counting by fives, counting by tens, and use their favorite to, uh, toys at home. So even if you wanted to put a car or even a Cheerio or a My Little Pony, something that interests their child as well, um, to just make it extra fun for them and engaging. What's next? Oh, okay. Magnets. So, um, so measuring cups. Measuring cups are absolutely fantastic. Fill them with water, fill them with dirt, fill them with whatever you would like. And then you can take a half a cup and then fill up two half cups into a full cup. This is, uh, this is fractions, adding fractions together, subtracting fractions. Um, mm -hmm. So again, endless possibilities for measuring cups. And you can also incorporate time and money, one fourth, right? There's one fourth, you need four to equal one whole. So that's the same with uh, four quarters equal a dollar. Four, uh, there's four quarters almost in time, right? A quarter past one, a quarter to one. So just incorporating that language, that math language, as much as you can throughout different um, activities and topics within math. Another really fun thing is a stick. Of course, I don't have a stick here, but you have a stick at home. And sticks are fun. You can do so many things with sticks, so grab a stick. And then you also can take a rope and you can measure that stick mm -hmm. and then take this against the measuring tape that you have so you yeah. can see how long all your sticks are. Mm -hmm. That is a super fun activity as well. String again. Oh, string and beads. You can do so much with string and beads. So if this one is just, there's just five beads. So you can ask the student, show me all the different ways to make five, two and three, you know, four and one, five and zero. Also, again, with multiplication and just learning the multiples, uh, three, six, nine, 12. So they're getting to see it and they're also getting to move it. And they can pick the color beads. Also patterns, making patterns is so great. Um, and again, giving them that control of picking the colors they love. They pick, can pick the string color. That's another one we have. So. So again, just look around your house and try to think of household things mm -hmm. that can be turned into something that it's not intended for. Um, now we're going to kind of move into things that you can purchase. So it's something that you're going to spend around $20 on. A lot of the items that we have here, I think Michelle is going to um, uh, give resources at the end uh, where you can purchase some of these items. Um, so these are called uh, geomagnets, and um, these are great. They're just wonderful. They're different colors, 
and you could do patterns with this. So you can do an array. So an array is just a set where you have two times three, and then you have a visual of six. And let's say you just had two. Again, you can do so many things with this, but we'll just give you one example. Um, for math, you can take marbles. Let's say you're working on division and you have four marbles and you want to know what four divided by two is, four into two equal groups. And of course you can, it can get larger and larger and larger because it comes in a stack like this. But just uh, for this example, you would put two, four divided by two mm. is two. So use marbles for division, for, mul for multiplication, but put them in containers so there's always a visual of the problem. So I know you all have tons of workbooks at home, and so did I, <laughs> raising my children as well. Um, but take those worksheets instead of pencil to paper, mm -hmm. do an activity that gives a visual of what the problem is. These are really great. This was from the dollar store, which I love that dollar store. So these are just another example. These are ice cubes, uh, water ice cubes that are supposed to be in my freezer right now, but I use them to put math uh, equations on them, right? So five plus one. And then you can also do uh, bigger cubes. And, you, and they're just Expo markers. So again, pick a color. The kids can have a lot of fun with that, rolling it and getting it interactive. Dominoes. Dominoes are outstanding. You can do these dominoes for matching. You can do it for addition. You can do it for uh, subtraction. If you just mm -hmm. take um, one, one plus one is two, five plus zero is five, four plus two is six. So use dominoes and you can do multiplication as well. You could do four times three is 12. Totally. 3D shapes are phenomenal. We have so many cans of soup in our uh, pantry, but we also, you can buy cubes that are uh, 3D and they go along, you can buy this and also the pattern blocks. Let's see if I can. <laughs> the pattern blocks are phenomenal. Um, you can go on and Google just pattern blocks and then print out uh, worksheets that are in color and for the kids to match up. And then you're learning hexagon and a polygon and all different great things with shapes. Again, you could do patterns. Um, it's, it's endless. Um. Another really fun and expensive thing is a geo board. You can get this at Lakeshore or you can order it online. And a geo board is, it's just a grid. And um, on the X axis, let's see down here, it says zero to 10. And then on this side as well, zero to 10. So you can plot points on this, you can make shapes on this, and these are just rubber bands. And the kids have a lot of fun trying to create their own shape, different types of triangles. Um, so this is another great tool. Mm -hmm. The Unifix cubes, so great also. You can, um, when you're doing the ones and the tens, right, make blocks together. And then again, you can also do patterns with them. Um, we just took out a sample, uh, but they come in huge box. They're phenomenal. And then also bean bags, number bean bags. This is all so fun too. Kids can throw them, well, throw them lightly, not really. Yeah. <laughs> and have fun. It's good to give them like a boundary, either a table, you know, keep it on the table. Um, and they can play around with it. And then on this side, you can see that uh, it e even could be like a spelling activity. Uh, we can really play around with it. And it's great because the even numbers are in blue and the odd are in red. Um, so that's great too. And that can go with um, the measuring tape that I have. You can use many of these kind of at the same time to teach a concept. Then our 
ticket items that you can buy as well. Um, this is the Kid O, and then we'll do the bounce battle if you want to. Yeah. Can you see that? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> as long as it's okay on your end. Um, yeah, this is really cool. I, I ended up purchasing this at Kidstop, but I think you can get it mm -hmm. online. Oh yeah, there's a link mm -hmm. on um, the resources. So this is just a magnetic board where you can design, but you also can do multiplication, you can do another array, so it's three, two times, um, and then you can do division, addition, you can say, show me what um, three by four is. One, two, three, one, two, three, one. And the kids absolutely love this. And even if you just wanna say, draw me a shape, Right, draw That's me right. Um, a polygon or a closed shape. Or a square. Like a square. Mm -hmm. Because a square, you know, each side is equal. Yeah. So a square. And this is a super fun tool. And then you just scrape it Ooh. and it goes away. So that's more of a higher ticket in, but that's fun. This has endless possibilities. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I use this bounce battle with so many things. All right. So one of the things I talk about with my students is trying and failing, trying and failing and trying and getting better and trying and getting better and better and better until where it's success. Because so many of our students, mm -hmm. they don't want to fail and they feel like that's something that's not a good thing, but I'm constantly telling them it's okay to fail because that's where we learn. So the first thing I do with this is we try to just bounce it into a container and we keep on going in. Then when they're successful, you really get to drive home that point that it's okay to fail. But this is magnificent because, let's see here. Um, this is a cube, this is a cube. So mm -hmm. you can teach volume with this. So it's just the length times the width times the height, first of all. And then you can teach rows and columns with mm -hmm. this. And then you get to see, I don't know if you can see, but it's like the end side, you can see how volume is created and how it can be measured. Um, some of the other fun things you can do with this is a pattern. So you could do two weights, and I'm sorry, they're gonna roll. <laughs> but you can do, say you have two, two whites, two oranges, what would be the next pattern? and then your student can choose the next pattern. And then you can mix it up and make it really, really fun. Um, and let's see here, what else can we do with this? Um, I'll just, other things are not coming to mind right now, but you could get really creative with, with something like this. Even if you just wanna add the different colors, it could be addition, subtraction, um, oh, ratios. Ratios, ratios. absolutely. Yeah. Like uh -huh. how many orange mm -hmm. balls to white balls, and that would be a ratio of mm -hmm. two to two. Mm -hmm. So lots of fun things to do with this. Yeah. Another thing I, I wanted to show is this, um, again, going back to the interest of the child and how important it is. This is Uno, which I love the game Uno, um, but also you can get it. Minecraft Uno, and also there's different types of Unos with characters, right? So you could play the classic way of Uno, but then you could also do, okay, so what's seven plus four, or seven minus four, seven times four, and then, oh, you know, take four, so you're adding within the game. And then for the older kids, it's like, add this one and this one and this one, or multiply them all. So getting creative with card games, even classic card games, um, is really engaging to the children. And then also just other things around the house. You have the clock, money. Exactly. Uh, you can use change. Um, yes. Like I said, a regular deck of cards. Um, math is super fun to use just household items around, around your house. 
All right, would you like to go to reading? Yeah, All let's right. do that. <laughs> All right. Hey. Reading is so fun. That's reading. what we're really passionate exactly. about. Exactly. Yes. So we're exactly. going to just start with the 44 sounds, uh, which I think Jones. Yes. So there are 44 sounds in the English language, um, and you can yeah. just Google the alphabetic code. And um, we think the magnetic letters mm -hmm. that you buy at Target mm -hmm. are good. Yes. But we think when you buy letters that teach the 44 sounds, the TH says, and that is one sound. So I think it's important if you're going to invest any kind of money in um, letters, magnetic letters, find ones that have the sounds. So the, this, this came from junior learning and it's, it's called rainbow phonics and we have a link. Um, again, with our resources. And using, um, like Kathy said, these letters are great, and then you can manipulate them in other ways too. So here is a Versa board, but you can get this from Amazon or again, Junior Learning. Um, and so what I've done here, oh, sorry, I've only to see. So I, um, you can get creative. This is just Microsoft Word, finding what the student is interested in. It could be Elsa, dinosaurs, cars, robots, really finding and personalizing what your student is into. Because once they see that, they get so excited. So for example, um, I have here cat, right? So you can touch the, the colors as well as, okay, what's that? first sound you hear the and so when it's a little tricky when they're first um, trying to kind of figure out the sounds and manipulating them sometimes I said okay well what is that Elsa sound right so you're trying to pair um, and going back to almost math the ordinal numbers of first second third right you're incorporating math in here so this says cat cat excellent now show me a uh, cut Right, and then so, sorry, I'm trying to do this. And then you would um, manipulate it like that, like so. And then if that says cut, show me hut. Like that, if that says hut, show me hug. Oh, good, good. And then when you're doing this, you're tapping and saying it, the sound. I'll give you an example, like uh, g. What's that last sound you hear? What's the first sound you hear? And the vowels are always gonna be a different color. The vowels will be red. Um, but you can take this not only with magnets, you can do it with alphabet bean bags. So we had the number bean bags. They also come, again, in um, alphabetic bean bags. You could use it with that. You can use it with good old bananagrams. Um, what? Oh, so Bananagrams oh, have their yeah. own website, so log yep. on to bananagrams.com. Again, it's on the resource page, mm -hmm. and there are a million activities you can do with Bananagrams. We love them. And then this was the math resource that we had from the dollar store. You could use this also for your words, and you can buy you know more of them, um, but. Again, roll the dice, put your words. Again, you can use good old ice cubes that are supposed to be in the freezer. You can write on them with a permanent marker. Um, anything to just show them in different ways uh, to manipulate those sounds. All right, good. Um, how about Spot It? Oh, great. Spot It is a great game. You'll find this at Target, order mm -hmm. it online. So Spot It is a, a game where you have um, a set of, of items and then one is turned over and then your partner has a set of items. And as soon as this is flipped over, you try to find um, a similar item on your card. For instance, I have a bottle. There's a bottle on the center one, as well as a bottle on your partner's card and a bottle on the center one. So as soon as you yell bottle, then, or sometimes you're just pointing to it, use that as a teaching moment. Mm -hmm. And what does bottle, what is the sound that bottle begins with? Buck. So that's another great 
game that you can, and there, I, I, again, get really creative with games that you purchase and try to use them in a different way than they're intended. So what you're trying to do is go from sounds to words, to phrases, to sentences, right? You're trying exactly. to build upon those. And so, so once you've kind of manipulated with the sounds, then you can go on to the words. Um, so this is a great game, haiku, haikus. <laughs> yes. A little play on word there. Go ahead, want to roll it? Yeah, so you get a, you get a set um, mm -hmm. and your partner gets a set and then you roll the, the cubes and then you make a silly sentence. Mm -hmm. And this is for a little bit older kids. Mm -hmm. Like I'll use, I'll use this game with some of the students that I have that are 12 and 14. Yeah. And it can be really fun and it can get really crazy and elaborate. So you just line up your, your, the words that you roll and create sentences and they're super fun and it can last for an hour. And also if you wanted to pull out the words that maybe the younger students uh, or can pronounce, they give you that flexibility with that. You know, some have a suffix to them, but this is just your basic CBC word. Um, if you're practicing A, you know, the AY, the pairing. Um, so it's really great to, you can be creative and kind of pre-pick the ones you want your students to roll. And so depending <laughs> on where your child mm -hmm. is, you, you can, can choose these words and then you mm -hmm. can talk about the parts of speech, like what an adjective is or what a pronoun is or what a noun is. So, uh, and then when you create the sentence, talk about the four sentence types, an interrogative sentence, a declarative sentence. Mm -hmm. So you could really have a lot of fun with that. Let's make a sentence. Yeah, so okay. now we've done that and now we're, now we're building our sentence. Oh, this is so great because as you can see, uh, let me show, can you, let me just go, I want you to make sure you see the whole thing. This game is called <laughs> Very yeah. Silly Sentences mm -hmm. and um, if you look, if you look at the box, it'll say well, intended for age um, four to seven. Mm -hmm. I, again, think outside the box. So instead of using this board, you could just take all the cards and you could turn them over and you could create your own sentence and it could go on for multiple sentences. You could talk about sentence fragments versus mm -hmm. a complete sentence, which is a complete thought with you know, an, a noun and a verb. So you have, it's color coded. So you get to pick, you get to pick a, a card. An article is already there, but let's pick an adjective, scared. And then we can pick a noun, which is cat. And then it, you take turns with your partner and then you pick a verb, talks, and then a preposition. Prepositions are really fun because, um, mm -hmm. Explain to your student that a preposition is anything a plane can do to a cloud. Or as one of my students who loves space, as a rocket ship can do to the solar system. <laughs> so it's anything a plane can do to a cloud. And then teaching moments all along the way. Yeah. Think about how many teaching moments you have here. You can sound out these words. You can talk about how a cat is a, a noun, a person from place yeah. thing or an idea. Um, sorry, article and an adjective. <laughs> and then you, you have this fun sentence. Yeah. And um, the cards I didn't pull out, there's one that says dull and there's one that says teacher. And whenever that combination comes out, my, my students just laugh out loud. <laughs> like, dull teacher. Yeah, that's <laughs> mm -hmm. So that's another really fun idea. And then if you say like all right well this game i would have to cost money for this game you can print out your own sentences yes. and make your own sentences so you can start off with ones that your child um has interest in again like um i like robots um and you make it on microsoft word and then you can just cut it out and they can manipulate that then you can take it from their favorite book or a book you're reading if you're doing a book study and take a sentence right from your book. Um, yes. About, for instance, mm -hmm. the verbs in that. So um, this, is from the, um, this is from The Magician's Nephew, mm -hmm. which is the first book in Narnia. And I'm, I'm doing a book study with one of my students. And this is actually one sentence. <laughs> and so 
I was explaining to him as we were reading this is a very, very long sentence, but it's still accurate as a complete thought. Mm -hmm. And some sentences are really long. So I printed the sentence off, I cut it, and then his job is to put it back in order. And as he's putting it back in order, we're talking about the parts right. of speech and right. we're talking about the type of sentence it is. And even, I mean, going into uh, proper nouns. Well, why is this one capitalized? Why is there a comma right. after this mm -hmm. one? Mm -hmm. So punctuation as well. Um, then I want to show, this is another, this is like a higher ticket item, but this app is really great. This is Touchtronics. So I want to show everyone, um, again, this is on um, a website, um, Junior Learning again. And so these are uh, letters. Uh, let me show you an example. And so you could do the same sound if you just want. Right, and then you just erase it. Or, oh. Right, and it gives the visual cat. And then you say, all right, if that says cat, show me cut. So this, again, another way to manipulate those sounds. Good, if that says cut, show me hut. Perfect, and then or tap on uh, that third sound. Perfect, so then uh, it kind of gives you that auditory feedback, which is great. So that's Touchtronics. And that comes with math also. They have math and letters. Junior learning is amazing. Yeah. Google Junior <laughs> Learning. You can um, you can order everything that they have mm -hmm. on the web. Oh, it's also at Lakeshore. Uh, yeah, so several things at Lakeshore. Mm -hmm. um, okay, for some of the older kids um, and younger, yeah. uh, Story Cubes. So they come in lots of different versions. I think this is the original, and this is uh, Borges. And you just take like four. Yeah. Okay. I'll take four, you roll them. And it's very similar to the cubes that have words on them, but you tell stories. So um, once upon a time, there was a boy who was very, very curious. And one day he came across fire. He couldn't believe his eyes. <laughs> then he dropped into a trap door. Oh, but so, he had a magical wand, so it's okay. <laughs> so that, that's really fun. They can do that alone. They can do that with yeah. their siblings or um, with you. Yeah. These okay. are really great, too. Kathy, you want to talk about that? Yeah, yeah. Um, so when we're talking about like structured literacy, when we're reading, it's really important that we talk about roots. Um, so we, you really want your younger, you would be surprised. I have students who are eight that are learning Latin and yeah. Greek roots, and you start to recognize those roots in words. Mm -hmm. And, and you also will understand, you'll learn the meaning of a word, like geo means earth. And this is a deck that I got at a teacher convention. Um, honestly, I don't know. We'll try to, oh, it's washingtonreads.com. Yeah, we can put the we'll link. try to put the mm -hmm. link on here. But the most yeah. important thing is that you're teaching what a prefix is, mm -hmm. what a base is, and what a suffix is. And I know you're thinking, well, aren't, is that called a root? But all of them are called roots. The base is what you're thinking of what a root might be, but they're all root words. Yeah. So you're talking about suffixes, bases, and prefixes. And just a deck of cards. Again, you don't have to buy these. You can Google Greek and Latin roots and you can make your own cards. Yeah, so that's really important as well. Uh, back to the syllables. Yeah, syllabication. So you want to teach your student mm -hmm. how many syllables mm -hmm. are in words. And you can do that when you're driving. And when you're saying a word like, um, what's an example? Uh, banana. Yeah. <laughs> banana. Yeah. So syllables, each syllable has a vowel sound mm -hmm. in it. Not a vowel, but a vowel sound. And when you're saying a word like banana, it has three vowel sounds and your chin drops. Mm -hmm. When you say a vowel sound, your mouth opens. So that's a really great way to determine how many syllables are Sometimes in Sometimes I like that better than clapping it out because I've had students like banana, you know. So you move, the movement of your chin exactly. making the sound, exactly. um, I would say is sometimes more accurate. Mm -hmm. 
book that we read. And then we want to do um, all the different ways. So right, reading so and writing um, okay. intermingle, right? And so we have the mm sound, but there's so many different ways to spell the mm sound. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and Lauren and I have students who have dyslexia. Mm -hmm. And to remediate dyslexia, you really need to use all the principles of structured literacy. And um, so not only learning the 44 sounds of the English language, but how they're presented in words. And we'll just use mm as an example. Yeah. Oh, by the way, um, instead of having a word wall at your house, yeah. if that's something you do, do a sound wall instead. It's gonna be more powerful and your child's gonna be a better reader because mm -hmm. of it. So let's, let's talk about um, this symbol. The symbol is M, but we don't talk about the symbols as much as we talk about the sound. So this makes the mm sound. And 94% um, of the time, it's gonna be represented as a single M. But sometimes you're gonna see that as two M's together, but it still makes the same sound. Sometimes you're gonna see M, N, and the N, autumn, the N is silent. So talk, talking mm -hmm. about those silent letters, because it can be confusing why the word write, when you physically write something, has a W when it's an er sound, but that's a silent letter. So teaching your child about silent letters when you're just talking to them. And then the last one is comb, where the B is silent. Mm -hmm. So these, um, this came off of a website called Literacy Bug, mm -hmm. Literacy Bug, which is a fabulous, fabulous website. Yeah. And then going into writing, when you practice that, you know, making it fun. This slant board is my go-to for everything. So not only is it magnetic, but it, like I said, it is a slant board. So you see it has, um, you know, little things you can put up and then also a clip. So then when you're practicing the spelling, you can use so many great different color markers and you can ask the student, you want to do red, blue, orange, pick a color. The more you can make it fun and interactive with them having um, kind of control over the colors they use and you're practicing those on the whiteboard. Um, this is a great, great tool. And having a whiteboard that you can move around, you're working on the floor, you're working on the dining room table. I know a lot of people have whiteboards and they just stick it on the wall and that's its permanent home. Um, we don't have we, to do that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sometimes your kid wants to lay on the floor. Exactly. And that's fine. Yeah. Right? It's like, okay, do you want to work on the floor today? Sounds great to me. Let me give you my portable whiteboard and bring it to you. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like we're really flexible. And it's like I am you could do your work in whatever means you want. Um, but we're gonna do your work. <laughs> but just um kids love, I highly recommend um the whiteboard. And then remember at Costco, yeah. uh, Costco has a whiteboard that she and I both use. Mm -hmm. It was $20 and it comes with tons of markers. Yeah. Um, and that, that is absolutely ideal. Um, they'll just drag it around and throw it on a rug someplace yeah. and that's where they're drawing. Yeah. yeah. And then paper, right? Oh, I go through so much paper. So this is just a great tool um, to just uh, do it. Surface right. area and then you give the kids... These are erasable gel pens, at which the kids love because they get to erase it, you know? So you can use, of course, the pencils, um, but colored, uh, like the markers, colored pencils, gel pens, this type of pen. Kids love this pen, um, all the different colors. We wanna encourage writing as mm -hmm. much as possible. Mm -hmm. And um, the program we both use, if your child has dysgraphia, we use Handwriting Without mm -hmm. Tears. Um, on their website, yeah. they have a lot of free resources mm -hmm. and you can download printed paper and you can also, um, you can say your child is working on how to write his or her name, then you can use their printed paper and you can actually type in his or her name yeah. and then print that out. And then it's a great practice tool with um, lined paper. And then the WH questions, oh, we can't stress enough how important the WH questions are to ask your child um, when you're reading a book. Uh, let's get them out, yeah. All right, so this so, is an example, yeah, from Charlotte's Web. So um, I'm reading Charlotte's Web with one of my students, and I read lots and lots of books <laughs> with my <laughs> students. Uh, and, and let me just jump off on that really quickly. 
Um, so choose a book, read that book with your child, but dive really deep into it because you can teach math through that book. You can teach history through yeah. that book. You can teach geography through that book. You can teach science through that book. You mm -hmm. can teach anything through a book. You could go into rabbit anatomy. You could, you could <laughs> go into the structures of bones and a horse. Um, so let's just, um, let's just jump in here. Who, what, when, where, why, and how. Uh, the reason those are important is because it allows your student to start deciphering what is essential information mm -hmm. and what is not essential information. Absolutely. So once you read a passage, say you read four pages together with your students, and then after that passage, don't do it at night. I know you want to do it at night, but at, if you're doing this activity, right. don't do it as they're falling asleep or as you're falling or asleep. Or as they're trying to eat lunch. Exactly. <laughs> Just be aware of the time that you're choosing to do this. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, so then we're going to go with... Here are all of our characters. <laughs> Again, I just found these online and yeah. I printed them off. So find all of your characters. These characters came from the specific passage. So have all the characters there, but then have them draw up the specific passage that they're reading. Also, if you can't say get these pictures, students, some students love to draw. So exactly. they can draw their own uh, version of Wilbur. <laughs> yeah, great. <laughs> So we read a passage and then I'll say who. If there's more than one character, mm -hmm. they're still just gonna choose who. So the who can definitely be the goose. Who is the goose? Well, what did the goose do? The goose helped Wilbur. When? Mm -hmm. When Fern was visiting. Where? At Zuckerman's farm. Why? And then you jump mm -hmm. off onto a conversation about why. Mm -hmm. Because the goose wanted to help Wilbur. And, and another thing you can add on, depending on the age of your child, but I would start early, is that the goose yeah. is a noun. And then what she did is a verb. Mm -hmm. You can even do what she did, like happily helped. You can add an adverb. Can you all see that? Yeah. Okay. yeah. And these are all pre-writing oh, activities, right? So what you're getting ready for is not only are you talking about it, but you're you're getting ready to, to almost write it in a sentence, exactly. right? And bullet points. So it's the yeah. same thing almost like when we went from sound to word to phrase to sentence. It's kind of the exact same thing with writing. So you go from these main points to maybe a bullet, um, like you're writing jot, jotting down notes to a sentence to a paragraph. Right. And mm -hmm. again, it depends on your child right. and where they are. Mm -hmm. You can even get into subordinating conjunctions, mm -hmm. which is because, because. So you want to connect a story with characters that they love, mm -hmm. a situation they understand. And the thing that I think we struggle with with some of those workbooks that you buy is the stories don't hold meaning. Right. But they love Fern already and yeah. they love Wilbur already. And the student that you're doing, she picked this book. She right. Chose so the again, book. it's that ownership that the kids have over um, picking what they want to read. Right. And then at the very end, you're going to um, you're going to potentially create sentences mm -hmm. and you can write a summary and you can start off with who did what when where and hi how and they're so proud of themselves because they have created three sentences and this will actually take them really far the last thing i just want to say is you always want to you always want to talk about the type of sentence it is and the punctuation that goes with each of these sentences. These I purchased, you don't need to purchase right. them. You can just print them off yourself. Mm -hmm. oh, Story Matic. Let me just. Okay. 
So this is really fun when you want your child to keep a journal or you want your child to read a story. Storymatic is, um, oh, whenever you're on vacation and you see those fantastic toy stores, <laughs> go in there and just get ideas. So I'll go in there and I'll purchase one thing, yeah. but I've gotten eight ideas about what I can do without purchasing those items. Like, oh, that, that was a really great way to do a writing program yeah. or a math program. So you don't necessarily need to spend a lot of money. Mm -hmm. These I decided to buy <laughs> because they're <laughs> great. Um, you choose a card and for instance, this says a person who will do whatever it takes. So that's part of the storyline. And then you choose the other color card. You can choose as many as you'd like. I'll, I'll do up to four sometimes. And then it can be a school clown is a person who will do whatever it takes. And they're like story starters. Mm -hmm. And then again, then they're There's gonna write this story. Mm -hmm. They're gonna write the story. And then you're gonna go back and you're gonna point out where the noun is, where the verb is, mm -hmm. where the preposition is, what type of sentence it and is. And back to the WH question, well, when? When, um, where, did that happen? who, what, uh -huh. all that. And these, again, another um, yeah. story okay. starters. So, we'll put these away. Okay, I talked about a thing called expensive words. Expensive <laughs> words, and, I, and the kids love it. They're like, well, how much does that one cost? And I'm like, oh, that's like $1,500. <laughs> So what you want to do, and <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so what you want to do is you don't want to say great all the time mm -hmm. in your writing, or you don't want to say um, good all the time in your writing. You want to give some expensive words. So I found this deck of cards to study FAQ words. That again, I'm using them with some of my mm -hmm. students who are eight and ten. So. You can do like, um, let's find some really great ones that they absolutely, oh, eradicate, love <laughs> that one. Yeah. Um, mesmerize, that's another great one. Infamous, I, my students will learn these words and then they'll use them a hundred times in the next three days. <laughs> <laughs> Ubiquitous, condone, complacent, prognosticate, yeah. frugal. I didn't do right to sound those words out. Okay, so another thing that you want to talk about when your child starts writing are rules. There are comma rules. There are quotation rules. There are spelling rules. There are plural rules. And have them keep a notebook with all the different rules, and then please don't forget to do retrieval practice. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna spend all of this time teaching your child something, but if you look at cognitive scientists and how what they've discovered about how we retain information, it's really important that you do six different strategies. And one we'll just talk about today is retrieval practice and spacing will do two. So for instance, if you are going to teach um, a rule such as, well, we'll just talk about this rule. Um, this is when a word ends with a, can you, uh, yeah, like there that. you go. Yeah. So the first spelling rule you could teach is when a word ends with a short vowel followed by a consonant, double that last vowel before you add an ED. When you teach something like that, you wanna see practice, mm -hmm. but you also want to give your child an opportunity to not, not talk about that rule for a while, space it out a little bit, and then retrieve mm -hmm. it. So on Monday, teach it, retrieve it on Wednesday, retrieve it again on Friday. And Quizlet is something that's just amazing for this retrieval practice, yeah. and then it goes to long-term memory. So spacing and retrieval will help your child retain information. So spelling rules. Um, there are 50, let's see how many, oh, there are 30 spelling rules, and I just laminated them, and we go through each one. Okay, so that's writing. Yeah, <laughs> Some yeah. ideas. Here's Some the ideas. fun part, brain Here's boosters. Brain boosters. <laughs> so another one of my students said it's not a brain break, it's a brain booster. Mm -hmm. So I have adopted that terminology, and I think it's awesome. Um, so you want to play chess with your child. Uh, if you don't know how to play chess, learn chess because it's fantastic. You, you get to learn strategies. You're always three moves ahead. But not only that, chess is a grid. 
So it's an eight by eight grid and you can teach math off of it. For instance, just for fun, not even to play chess, say I wanted to plot a point and I would talk about the Y axis and then the, um, I'm sorry, the X axis and the Y axis. And then you could talk about something that's horizontal versus something mm -hmm. that's vertical. And then you can plot a point. So whatever the point may be, it could be like, um, say it's five, two, you're going to go one, two, three, four, five, and then five, two, one, two. And that's gonna be your point. Um, this desk that we're on right now, I write on this desk. So let me just show you, I bought this desk at Goodwill for $20 yeah. and it, mm -hmm. um, let me get this right. so you can take a dry erase marker and write on this as, if you can find something at your house, you would there's so many things that you can write on, but say I wanted to do X and X, Y coordinate, and then I would do five, mm -hmm. two. And the kids love, 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 love writing on this desk. <laughs> <laughs> we get to write on the desk, that's fantastic. So that's one thing you can do. And then it just erases right off, especially if you use alcohol. So play chess with your, with your children. Another great, great, great thing is the Merge Cube. So the Merge Cube goes along uh, with your phone. It's an app or the iPad. And basically, it can show you things in 3D real, like real time. And so it's... It'll turn into the planet, sun, planet, the sun, a cat, the body, mm -hmm, um, heart. And then if you pay for a subscription, so again, this is like a, a higher ticket item, uh, a yearly subscription, they have all the subjects, math, science, history, um, that you can um, manipulate and and it, it's a really nice supplement to activities. Um, here, I just bought magnets because they're really, yeah. really, really fun. Mm -hmm. These are neodymium magnets. They're very strong, repelling and attracting yeah. North Pole, South Pole, lots of fun things you can do with magnets. Yep. Also, we love the thinking putty. Yeah. So thinking good. putty, which, oh, I can use muscles for this. The thinking putty, right? Kids use, love to hold that while they're learning. This is also just memory foam. So you could just go to the craft store, Joann's, um, and, and buy memory foam. This is so, and there's all different types of, um, like almost like a soft, medium, and a hard. Uh, kids love to just play with this, too. Um, higher ticket items, mm -hmm. let's see here. Oh, yeah. I love VR, I use it a lot in my teaching. So you can get mm -hmm. Google goggles and you place your phone in there and you can download apps and all of a sudden, you are on the space station. Yeah. All of a sudden you are on the planet Mars. And there are so many wonderful yeah. things you can do. It's $13 yeah. and you can ones. just download free. You can go to the Great Wall of China. It's fantastic. Um, if you wanted to go a higher ticket, I started off with Google Goggles and I realized how wonderful, wonderfully my students responded to that. So I invested in an Oculus. And this Oculus is a VR mm -hmm. and you can, if you're studying Van Gogh, you can walk into Starry Starry Night and walk into the painting. And so I love VR if you want to do a higher ticket brain booster. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and there were some apps that you mentioned. Um, speaking of the apps with the Merge Cube app and um, some of the Oculus, Oculus. Mm -hmm. other ones, if you want to talk about the NASA one. Yeah, phenomenal. so outreach programs are just mm -hmm. educational programs for teachers and parents, and they will have less than plans. Yeah. Um, Lauren and I love to go to MIT. Mm -hmm. MIT has a K through 12 uh, video section with lesson plans in there that mm -hmm. parents can easily follow and download. And they're fun and exciting. Um, TED Ed, mm -hmm. hop on TED Ed. They have wonderful videos and lesson planning. Um, and that's a, a crash course for older kids. Mm -hmm. That's great too. And um, 
So I think yeah. that's it. Yeah. But what, we're, I'm just going to end with that seminar because <laughs> we go on and, and on. Because <laughs> what I'm finding is with every student, we always talk about their interests, what their mm -hmm. interests are first. And we teach from there, from that spot. And I had a student who loved magic. So I went to a magic store and I spent an hour with this wonderful man and he taught me a bunch of magic tricks. Um, so find one magic trick that they're really, really good at because once they get to present it to someone else, their confidence just yeah. skyrockets. So and this is wonderful because they take this rope out and they're like, look at this fabulous rope. Oh, you can measure it. You can measure it. <laughs> Back to math. It. It's clearly a solid rope. Uh -huh. And then I am going to cut this rope in half and then I'm going to put it back together. And they're like, no, you're not, that's impossible. It's not gonna happen. And then they're like, whoosh. <laughs> and they're like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. And then you push it back together and then you pull the, the rope out. Uh -huh. So we just wanted to end with that. I think it's, it's important mm -hmm. that you don't spend a lot of time trying to teach yourself something out of a workbook. Yeah. Just find household items and mm -hmm. think about how you can teach from what you have in front of you, right in front of you. Absolutely. Ah. Thank you guys. Oh my God, I cannot believe you guys finished in an hour. <laughs> I'm amazed because I have like three pages of notes. Um, you went through so many different types of learning and so many different methods and how to approach it in so many different ways. I feel like I'm going to have to rewatch this a couple of times. <laughs> Take it all in. Um, but I love the use of household items to kind of expand on different ideas. Um, I loved the dollar store dice. like. That's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, it's like, yeah, why wouldn't you just use that and write on it? And then you can make the dice say whatever you want and you paid a dollar for And I feel like this is so everyone has this yes. because we're measuring ourselves being at home eating everything with COVID. <laughs> I know I have. And it's like, oh my gosh, this is a number line right in front of my face. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. totally. Yeah. I really like that too because well, my son's in that, you know, lower learning stage of addition and subtraction. And when you were doing the dots and moving things, I was like, duh, like that's so easy. And it never, ever occurred to me to do that. Um, so I love that. I love those story cubes that I thought was such oh, an interesting find. And so my son is nonverbal and we're always trying to get him to express himself more on his Occam device. And I was just like looking at that and how cool would that be to try to get him to make sentences based off of what he rolled on his Occam device. Right. I was like, so yeah. I'm gonna have to like run to late after this. Yeah, yeah. That's great, mm -hmm. I am amazing, which is crazy. Um, <laughs> but I also like that a lot of the stuff that you guys had was, like I said, things that you had around the house, um, I like the idea of the measuring cups because who does not have a measuring cup in their house? I don't know. Right? And so I just thank you guys so much. I think all of this information was um, really great. And thank you for talking about the apps. At the end, we'll make sure to include that amazing handout that you sent me with the video um, because I think the resources are just incredible because when you're not a teacher, you just don't even know where to go. Yeah, and everyone thinks they have to buy so many things. I mean, I'm guilty of it too. You know, I buy so many things and then I'll bring it home and my son is totally not into it. Yeah. So, and you're like, I just paid money for that. You know? Yeah. So it all have to be a high ticket item. Or figure out how you can make uh -huh. these items yourself. Right, yeah. Yeah, no, totally. Well, thank you. Thank you guys so much. This was really awesome. I know that everybody who watches it are going to be like, <sighs> because <laughs> there was so much information. I mean, you, you really covered a wide range of subjects and like lots of different age ranges too. I loved that magnetic board that you had where you yeah. could show the multiplication mm -hmm. on it. I loved, because I'm a scientist, so I'm a huge nerd. 
And I love the idea of using like the checkerboard as a graph. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yes. Because <laughs> as you were talking uh, with, with making the kiddo, you could also just write letters. You can also incorporate that in writing and kids can practice even the sounds, make the We awe. did not have enough time yeah. to show you <laughs> everything we do. With, we just did one or two examples, yeah. but we both used 10 to 14 examples of each of these. And it depends on, it depends on the student right. that's in front of you. Right. Right. Yeah. Definitely. No, I think you guys hit on a lot of really amazing points and I took a lot of notes and I'm really excited actually to start working with my son and be like, Hey, like we're going to do that, but we're going to do it this way. And it's going to be fun. <laughs> you have all of these things around the house, but you don't know how to incorporate them until somebody shows you. Right. And so I love the dice. I love the magnets because we have all that stuff, but yeah, yeah right. I, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We all do. Yeah. 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 Thank yeah. you ladies so much. I would love to have you back so on. Fun. Maybe we can even do like more concentrated versions and like, let's I just start that. making sounds. Let's just talk about addition. Let's just. Yeah. Yeah. We would love to just do reading. like reading, yeah. reading. Wow. Because so many students that have learning challenges, mm -hmm. like 70 to 80% of students that have a specific learning disability, it's in reading. Yeah. So although we hit writing and math, but we could do hours on reading. I would love it. I would love it. I'm game. Thank you guys so <laughs> much. Thank you. Thank I you so much. It. And um, I, you know, look forward to more webinars with you guys. This was fun. Yay! We love that. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Shell. Uh, thank you, Shell. <laughs>